Is anyone having trouble killing Hadern? I don't know why, but the fact that this game didn't let you heal when fighting him really threw me off for some reason. And I'm sure it has others as well. If you're after one of the other three weapons in the game and you seem to be having a little bit of trouble, you can actually use your shell retrieval as a means of healing yourself in the middle of the fight. Force Hadern into fighting you around your shell and retrieve it once your health starts getting low. In addition to the chance you're given to retrieve your shell when knocked out of it, this tactic effectively grants you a third wind against Hadern, which serves you extremely well if you're trying to fight him with lower grade weapons. This tactic gives you a lot of extra breathing room, and it was pretty much what allowed me to beat Hadern without using any quenching acid, and I could spend that much more time with each weapon before deciding which one to upgrade. Each of the four melee weapons, the Hallowed Sword, Hammer and Chisel, Martyr's Blade, and the Mace, have their own array of movesets and unique special abilities that differentiate them from the rest of the arsenal. The Smoldering Mace excels at dispatching multiple enemies with its wide-sweeping attacks, while weapons like the Hammer and Chisel seem to be really good at putting pressure on a single enemy. It's best to find and spend as much time as you can with each weapon before deciding to upgrade anything too much. Weapons are not shell-specific. Teal can use the Smoldering Mace at the same capacity that Solomon can use the Hammer. Although certain shells do have a predisposition to lighter or heavier weapon types, Aradrim has a much higher HP bar than other shells, and so it would make sense to have him wield a larger, tankier weapon like the Martyr's Blade or the Smoldering Mace. Like most of the Souls games, you develop the most muscle memory and reaction time by studying the movesets and various attacks of your enemy. And the best way to do that is to just hang back and let the enemy do whatever the hell they want to do. When a certain enemy does a certain attack, always be thinking about which direction you'll be safest to dodge, how to tell the attack is coming, etc. This behavior served me well in a lot of other Souls games before it, but I feel like this skill greatly benefits you in Mortal Shell. There are a lot of ways to null an enemy attack. You can dodge through it, of course, but you can also parry it with tarnished steel, you can harden yourself and block it while regaining stamina, and so forth. So knowing how enemies attack you is probably one of the most important skills you'll be honing during your time in Fulgrim. And speaking of dodging, dodging in Mortal Shell takes significantly less stamina than most other Souls-related games. So if you're beginning a fight with full stamina, don't be afraid to use a dodge as a means of closing distance between enemies and rush in for a quick combo, not just for disengaging. The player has quite a bit of leeway in choosing whether to use their abilities offensively or defensively, and the dodge is honestly no different. In doing this, you can really easily take advantage of a large opportunity window right after an enemy's strong attack. Time your dodge to where you're effectively dashing into an enemy's strong attack and take the opportunity to go on the offensive. You can also see when you dodge, your shell's body briefly uses the harden animation and turns to stone, which is a really cool physical representation of the iframes you get when dodging. The three-hit heavy combo is an extremely strong option for just about any weapon in your selection, but experiment enough with certain combos and you'll probably find a way or two around the significantly longer wind-up time. I've noticed that beginning a combo with two light attacks and then finishing it with a heavy strike does roughly the same amount of damage without having to worry about the longer wind-up. After finding this out, my use for the three-hit heavy combo noticeably decreased. It kind of pays to experiment with combos in Mortal Shell, because even though the damage seems similar across the board, some combos may take significantly less time to pull off. If you have trouble remembering this, just remember the why, why, why philosophy. As in, why, why, why in the shit would you ever use this attack combo? I realize that joke doesn't work because the heavy button is RT, but I'm sorry, I'm not, cha I'm not going back and changing it. I'm sorry. In the middle of any combo, you can press the B button or circle button in tandem with the right trigger or R2 button to immediately launch yourself into a really powerful jump attack with any weapon. 
So, if you wanted to begin a combo with a heavy attack, follow that up with two light attacks with the RB, and then use a jump attack as a finisher, which will probably end up being more powerful than a standard heavy finisher. I find this really good against ranged enemies like the crossbowmen. Jump attacks usually consume a much higher portion of stamina than your standard light and heavy attacks, so definitely use this maneuver situationally, and make sure you aren't leaving yourself vulnerable to another attack once it's over. You don't have to dodge through every attack. Instead, you can use the left trigger or L2 button to harden yourself, which functions as a sort of blocking mechanic. Most enemy attacks will deflect off of you in this state. Hardening, as opposed to dodging, has a few benefits. It gives your stamina bar a small window of time to recharge. It can give you a quick breath of fresh air if a certain fight might be getting too chaotic and it can also throw enemies off balance when they're deflected, leaving them open to a strong combo that you will likely have the stamina for. You actually don't have to kill the Grisha in order to loot what's inside the chest next to it. I did this the hard way and somehow didn't even see the chest before the deed was already done and my sword was already plunged into its skull, but you don't have to take the difficult way out like I accidentally did just to grab the chest, and even if you die to the Grisha, you'll still end up with the mechanical spike upgrade. This sort of goes back to the importance of finding and spending time with each weapon before you decide which one you believe fits your playstyle. Make sure you're devoting time to just exploring and collecting. You can find all four shells right here in Falgrim, and you don't even need to kill anything to do it. It's extremely important, in my opinion, to actually take the time to journey to each shell and absorb them before really deciding on which one you'd like to allocate glimpses into. There are a total of 11 quenching acids in the world of mortal shell, but in my experience, it's definitely the best option to try and get any weapon to plus 5 as quickly as you can. There are two you can buy from the vendor in Falgrim, you can find one in the Iron Maiden next to a couple of Claymore enemies, find another by busting open this chest here in the abandoned chamber next to the Disciple, and you can find a fifth down in the enshrined sanctum, being guarded by two black ghosts. There are six more out there, but this is definitely one of the easier ways to get to plus five in my opinion. And continuing on in each area, you'll find plenty more, so don't feel as though foregoing any of these mentioned will prevent you from getting a plus 5 weapon before the endgame. I would definitely recommend Solomon to be the very first shell you pick up, since it's the closest to you and you only really have to kill one enemy to pick it up. Whereas Teal and Aridrim are guarded by much more challenging encounters, Solomon is literally right past the Grisha and you don't even have to kill it in order to obtain it. I definitely like Solomon as a starter shell much better than Harris. He has one extra bar of resolve, and that little HP boost is really nice, especially for newer players. I would also recommend honing in on one shell and maxing it out before you start paying attention to any others, but having two shells to choose from at the very beginning of the game will put you ahead of the curve as far as carving out your own playstyle. When you upgrade a shell at full, Sester Janessa will become a vendor that offers you extremely powerful items, which is why it's so important to max out one shell as quickly as possible. You can press the left bumper to bring out the Tarnished Steel item and parry lighter enemy attacks. Parrying actually does quite a bit in Mortal Shell. A successful parry can ground your enemy and give you the immediate upper hand, in addition to dealing massive damage, but it can also give you a small health boost if you're running low on healing items. Basically, what you're aiming for is for the hitbox of an enemy attack to strike right when you have it fully held up, like this. Bringing out the steel has a very small wind-up animation, so for the most perfect timing, try your best to bring it out right before an attack would actually strike you. You will get really cool abilities from each shell you pick up, and it's really important to pay attention to all of these and how they would factor into your playstyle. Teal, for instance, can unlock effects where, whenever taking damage, there is a 20% chance that that damage will be taken out of your stamina bar instead of your health. 
There's another effect that gives you a slight damage increase when attacking with low stamina. One of Aerodrim's effects, however, is probably the most underrated in my opinion. Aerodrim has a certain effect that slightly increases attack damage with each successful kill. If you're prepping for a really hard fight, you can spend some time in the main Fulgrim area where enemies are at their weakest and just kind of chew on a few of them to get your numbers up. The benefits of this effect hard caps at 100, and the difference of your damage is honestly night and day. I was playing in the Narthex area, and I was getting these damage numbers from a plus two Martyr's Blade. But of course, I have no interest in choosing your playstyle for you. That kind of takes half the fun out of it. You don't have a default health restorative like an Estus Flask in Mortal Shell. Instead, you have various items that can be farmed or purchased. There are these things called Welt Caps that grow organically around Fulgrim. So if you're preparing for a boss fight or a particularly difficult area, circle Fulgrim a couple times and just kind of stock up on Welt Caps. The vendor also has an infinite supply of roasted rats, which are extremely cheap to buy, but they restore health at the expense of the player's resolve, which is an effect that has never really clicked well with my playstyle, but it might for yours. If you're new to the game and you haven't yet figured out where exactly the game wants you to progress, the only really integral piece of advice I have to give you is just please. Whatever you do, do not begin your journey in the Narthex. It is far and away the most challenging segment of the game, and I didn't realize that until I was halfway through it with nothing but a cheap plus one hallowed sword, so don't, yeah, just don't do what I did. The preferred order of the three areas are the Temple Grounds where you fight Imrud, the Crypt Area where you'll find the Enslaved Grisha and the First Martyr, and then once you've tackled both of those areas, chances are your shell will be more than ready for the Narthex part of the journey. The Narthex is where the end game is triggered, so don't do what I did and go rushing that first. If you like this really cool matte black foundling skin, there's certainly an easy way to get it, but you will be playing on a much harder mode for the bold duration of the game. Sever connection with all of your shells and continue playing the game as only the foundling. You receive a pretty cool aesthetic makeover, but you will in fact be playing the entire game as the foundling, meaning you'll only die in a single hit. If you thought this video was too broad or not specific enough for certain builds or shells, well then this is certainly not the only video you should be watching. There are hours of content on this game by other creators that have already made some pretty wonderful guides on which weapon to use, how to play into the strengths of any particular shell, and so forth. I've pinned a couple links in the comments, and you should totally check them out. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.